So I guess one of the things that really came out of the, the Origin Speaks, my, my latest book, was sort of ultimate confirmation that we were created to allow our creator to evolve. Our whole being, or our reason to be, is to allow our creator to evolve. And in doing so, its creator evolves as well. The origin being the ultimate creator needed to be able to evolve. So it created our, our, our source entity, our God, and the other source entities as well. And we were created by our source entity to do that. But in doing so, it was quite interesting because you find out that the origin itself, although it's this vast tract of energy, is, is not aware of how big it really is. It's got this very small area of sentience, although I'm told to call it polyomniscient sentience, that is still bouncing around this very small area, trying to understand what it is, experiencing itself, working with itself, and moving forwards. And one of the things that also came out of this with me was, was okay, we've got this vast tract of sentience in, a must, in an even bigger, vaster tract of, of, of energies, of structure which is unfathomably large. We start to realize as well, what created the origin? What created the absolute? What the Hindus call all there is, the absolute. There must have been something. Um, one of the most profound things I discovered was there was something that created the absolute. This something is actually part of the structure of the origin. There's um, something called event space where instead of us passing through time, as, as mankind thinks, we actually pass through a series of events and these events link themselves together. Think of them in terms of like bubbles of localized realities that we all create and, and they're either local realities or they're global realities or, or galaxy-sized realities or even universe-sized realities. But every time there's a choice to be made, whether it's a dualistic choice, trialistic choice or quadralistic choice, that being two directions to go in, three directions to go in, or four directions to go in. There are four realities that are created. So we, if we think as human beings, we're going to go this direction. Actually, we don't just go that direction, we go in these other th three directions, for instance, at the same time. So there's four versions of us get created. And so this, this space called event space, that's part of the structure of the origin, I discovered, actually created the origin. Now you can ask yourself, well, how can that be? Because space is space. And if, if it's created by a, a dualistic condition, how would it have the intelligence to do this? Well, the knowledge I received as part of this channeled information was that event space itself did develop a certain level of intelligence, actually quite a high level of intelligence, bordering on sentience. Its level of self-awareness that is achieved on this route towards sentience made it realize that it was only a piece of structure. It was only part of a much bigger being. And although it could reach sentience, full sentience, and start to become its own being in its own right, it realized that it be could become the creator, or should I say, change the direction in which things happened to allow a much bigger entity to be created what we now call the origin, or what I'm now told to call the origin. And so this almost sentient, you could even call it sentient if you wanted to, tract of structure of the origin, this space, this event space, actively started to select the parts of itself that would ensure that the origin, the energies, the energies associated with the origin would manifest themselves and the origin would be born, it would be created, it would coalesce and become this much bigger entity. Because it recognized that although it was itself was sentient, there was a much bigger possibility, a much more complete possibility that could occur if it gave itself up. So event space actually selected or deselected those spaces that would have perpetuated its own continuation in the way it was going to go, which was to be the dominant sentient being in this, in this unfathomably large area of space, and allowed those energies that were destined to become the origin to coalesce, manifest, 
become self-aware, after becoming intelligent, select themselves, become conscious, super conscious, start to create things, start to understand what they've created, and therefore recreate to perfect those creations, and therefore become sentient at the end. So event space sacrificed itself. I found out that event space actually got to the point where it almost made itself totally redundant. That being, it almost became non-event space. If you like, it was like a dinosaur that died out. But it didn't. It kept just enough of itself to continue to exist. Because it recognised that in actually creating its own demise in totality to create the origin, the origin would lose part of its own functionality. So it kept back just enough of itself to allow itself to continue. And therefore event space itself is intelligent to a certain level. It did never, re never reach this sentient level. It allowed, it, it removed that possibility, that possible possibility to allow the origin to become the origin. And therefore event space becoming a function of the origin albeit intelligent and, to some extent, autonomous as well. And that, to me, was the biggest revelation of the, the channeled works that created The Origin Speaks.